G'day guys and welcome to Redriven. Now, if ever a car was the epitome of vehicular cool class and aggression, it must be the BMW M3. Obviously not the, the latest G80 M3, that is truly bloody hideous, but this, the F80 M3, when brand new, were a brilliant car in all of their iterations. But the thing is, they're not new anymore. So are they still brilliant? Are they still worthy of our desire and excitement? What do they like to live with every day? What goes wrong with them? Are they reliable? What do they cost to own and maintain? And most importantly, should you buy one? Let's find out. Now, before we get deep into the M3, can I ask a favor? Would you mind hitting those like, subscribe, and bell icon buttons? It really does help us out a whole lot. And also, go and follow us on all the socials as well. Now this generation M3 is also available as an M4. Basically, the M3 is the sedan and the M4 is the same mechanicals underneath but with a coupe or convertible body shell. And it's been available in a whole host of different special and limited editions. Both the M3 and the M4 received some upgrades in 2015 and 2017, which were just some aesthetic and tech updates. And look, while we can't go into every graphic detail of every variant and special edition in this video, otherwise the video will just go for hours, we have done that and we've put it in our handy redriven sheet sheets. Our cheat sheets are invaluable as they provide a full breakdown of the car's model range, its common problems, what you need to look out for before you hand over your hard-earned cash, how much of that cash you should be handing over, and so much more. Check it out in the link below. Also, in this video, while we will be focusing on the Australian derivatives of the 2014 to 2020 M3, if you're not from Australia or you want to know about the M4, don't freak out because everything we're going to be going over should cover M3s and M4s in your local market. Okay, how does it look? It looks fantastic. If you don't think this is a good looking car, that's totally okay, but just please know you're completely wrong or an idiot. Now, I also should note, shooting black cars at daytime is an absolute nightmare. The camera is not getting how awesome this thing looks and all the contours. Yeah, I wish it wasn't black. That's the only thing so far I don't like about it, but it's a challenge. Well done, Sam. What I love about the M3's look is that, look, it's obviously it's a, it's a 3 Series BMW, but it just looks a bit more muscular, a bit more aggressive. There's no need for stupid wings or silly body kits. It just looks purposeful. Love the pumped arches, all the details around the front. Bloody love it. Also, I'd take the M3 over the M4 every day of the week, and not just because of the extra practicality of the rear doors. I just think it looks a bit more squat, a bit more purposeful, a bit more understated. I think that the M4 is just a bit too showy in the coupe body shell. If you don't buy an M3 over an M4, what's wrong with you? Now, as far as quality goes, look, all the panel gaps are precise over the entire car. This car actually has a full clear wrap on it, so the paint doesn't look quite as dynamic without it because it sounds covered in cling wrap. Also, the doors, I don't know if you can hear this, just sounds, just sounds a bit cheap. Like, it doesn't, like, it, this is an expensive performance car. Just, I want more of a thud, not a clunk. Now, as far as issues go, there are a few reports of these door rubbers kind of perishing a little bit now that they're getting a bit older and they, they squeak against each other. It's a pretty easy fix. You can treat them all, get all new door rubbers, but this sounds a bit dodgy when they're all squeaky. Next up is this front lip, which, yes, it looks all very sexy and stylish, but it is quite low and it protrudes out a bit and it doesn't play nicely with curbs or parking bollards. So just check under here to see if it's had any uh, altercations with the earth. Also, the M3 is a performance car, and being European, it is expensive to fix if things go wrong. So go over it with a fine tooth comb and look for any dodgy repair work. Some people will go to some backyard panel beater to get it fixed rather than put it through insurance and do it properly. Also, check the rims for any gutter rash or damage because they cost a fortune to fix. Also, we know of some circumstances where some of the optional carbon fiber exterior trim pieces can come loose and get a bit rattly and sometimes fall off. The rear diffuser, just be careful of that. So, how's the interior? Well, look, it looks bloody lovely in here. It is aging just a little bit, like versus some of the newer cars in this class, but it still looks classy. It still does all the M3 stuff really nicely. As far as wear and tear goes, so far, so good. Like, the leather's aging really nicely. Leather on the steering wheel, you know, it's gone a little shiny, but not too bad. Some of the buttons feel a bit plasticky like they I know they felt like that from new but it's always just been a little disappointing they're, they're fine they do the job but just not quite premium enough for me the seats are spectacular they're the perfect amount of comfort and cushy and luxury yet they're supportive and sporty and the driving position this this is 
my perfect driving position. I adore the driving position, lovely. But one little issue about the seats, not an issue in this particular car, but we know of reports where it's happened. The plastic M3 badges, I suppose if you've got a really harsh back or maybe a knife sticking out of it, it can crack the plastic, so you might need some replacement seat badges. One thing that hasn't aged badly are the ergonomics. Everything is really easy to get to. iDrive is easy to get to. Everything's within touch zone. Just love it, I love it in here. Okay, the back seat. Well, as far as room goes, look, I'm 188 centimetres tall. This is in my driving position and heaps of room. This is really spacious. Also, getting in and out is really easy because the door opening is quite large. As far as quality goes, it's it feels like new in here. This is this guy's daily driver, but yeah, build quality, wear and tear quality, spot on. How's the tech? Well, the tech is really good when it works, but it's a bit like having a pet puppy. It's Great when it behaves, but not so good when it shits on the carpet. All BMWs have the iDrive system. This one has iDrive 5, and like all iDrives, it is really, really good. We're not gonna go into the depths of what this thing can do, because it would take forever, but here's a quick voiceover of me giving you a quick overview. Controlled via a touch a rotary controller, or for certain functions, being able to physically write commands, iDrive 5 supports Apple CarPlay, but not Android Auto. It does have Bluetooth connectivity, however, we have found it to be just a little bit clunky. iDrive also supports connected drive, allowing you to monitor your M3 remotely via a smartphone app, or gain access to a select few apps on the phone from the dashboard. Then there are the vast array of vehicle settings, which we'll get to later when we're actually driving this thing, but there are a couple of other issues. It will depend on what software your iPhone or iDrive has, but it's just disappointing that Hyundai can get it right from the outset, but the BMW unit still struggles now and again. Also, there are a few reports of the air conditioning systems kind of failing or just not blowing cold air, which is you know what they're supposed to do for a living. It's not a common issue, like it's not gonna be on every M3 or M4, but it's good to be aware of it. Is it practical? Well, yes, this boot is actually quite deep and the gap here is pretty gaping as well. The only thing, this lip, when you're putting like luggage or humans in, it just that can be a bit a bit annoying to get in and more importantly to, to get out. This is gonna be painful. As far as practicality in the back goes, I've got some pretty small door bins. I've got my own air vents and a 12 volt power outlet. I also have these kidney massage access holes for the driver. So as you're passengering, you can massage the driver's kidneys. Delightful. You also get some privacy shades. How cool is this? One at the back too. And practicality up front actually isn't all that amazing considering this is supposed to be a super practical car. You've got good sized door bins, but they're, they're, they're hard plastic, so a hard plastic water bottle is just gonna scratch around in there. Uh, you've got a spot for your phone here, but that's about it, except for you've got a spot just here, and there's another spot here. That'll depend on what software update of pant you're wearing. There's a spot here for tiny little things. A couple of cup holders, Okay size glove box, but that's that's about it. Unless you're wearing a backpack on your front, not a lot of storage. Is it reliable? What goes wrong with these mechanically? Well, this is a German-made precise piece of performance engineering. Surely nothing goes wrong, but does it? I'm not a mechanic, I can't answer that, but Jim is. From a mechanical and engineering point of view, they're beautiful, they're a work of art. Um, but things do go wrong. The S55 engine is closely related to the N55 engine and it does share some of the same problems. The S55, like the old N55, they do suffer from oil leaks around the oil filter housing and oil leaks around the valve covers. And the S55s, just like the old N55s, are direct injected, which means you're gonna have the same problems with clogging inlet tracts. So I suggest you fit a catch can. Another problem unique to the S55 in the M3 and the M4 is the crank hub. It's the gear that drives the timing chain. Uh, it relies on friction to hold it in place and sometimes it slips. It doesn't have a key or a dowel to hold it. Uh, and when that does, the cam timing's out. And it's definitely something that goes wrong more in high performance or tuned engines, but also goes wrong in the standard ones. Don't get me wrong, this is not a common problem. And it only happens on a very small percentage of them mainly the highly tuned ones, but when it does happen, it's expensive and can be catastrophic. Besides that, so far, there's not a whole lot that goes wrong with them. It's important to remember that they are European and they are a high performance car, and if something goes wrong, it's probably gonna be pretty expensive to fix it.
Is it safe? Yes. Like all modern BMWs, the M3 is loaded with safety gear. From their launch, M3s and M4s were equipped with six airbags, dynamic stability control, a five-star ANCAP safety rating, but each successive update included more safety equipment, either fitted as standard or included in various optional packages. Make sure you check out the cheat sheets for all the graphic details. So what's it like to drive? Well look, first up I like to sit quite low and hunker down, but even in my driving position, judging all the extremities of the car is super easy. These things aren't real big, in my opinion this is like the perfect size car. And it's just so easy to manoeuvre through traffic and into parking spots, round town, perfect. Like this thing's a few years old and it's got a decent amount of kilometres on it, but it still just feels so taut and like ready for action. You feel almost like energy bonded into the chassis, it's lovely. Now we touched on the tech before, but when it comes to driving modes, and look, if you're an M3 and an M4 fan, you already know all this stuff. But the level of customization that this is capable of through iDrive and through the vehicle settings is incredible. There are, it feels like hundreds of combinations of steering, transmission, brakes, suspension, throttle response. If you want to adjust it, you can adjust it. Plus there's a function called MDM mode, which is basically BMW's equivalent of your parents giving you sips of wine when you're a kid without letting you get wasted. It's awesome. Now the steering has three modes. I have it in Sport, which is right in the middle because comfort for me is a bit too light and fluffy. And Sport Plus, I feel like it's almost a, an upper body workout. It's a bit too, almost artificially heavy. Okay, as far as brakes go, look, they feel great after all these years. They still feel really nice and confident. They've got good bite, they've got good feel to them. I can't go you know, too crazy because this is a public road and we can't afford a racetrack yet. Many of these do come with an optional carbon ceramic brake package. Do you need that? Look, if you're tracking the car all the time, sure, on public roads, no, you don't need that. If you do find an M3 or an M4 with carbon ceramics, just be aware that when it comes time for maintenance, you might have to mortgage your house or your mum to pay for them. Suspension like the steering has three settings. I like it in comfort because I'm getting a bit old and my back's not real good. Sport for me is a bit too firm on these rubbish Aussie roads and Sport Plus is purely for billiard tables or race tracks. It is super, super firm. Age in kilometers generally isn't great for these adjustable suspension setups, but so far so good for the M3. So the handling, oh. okay. That front end is just glued to the ground. There is no understeer whatsoever. Mid corner balance is just, it's just delicious. And the rear end, like this thing's got some serious power, but it just feels so confident from the back. It, like, you can feel it squirming around a little bit, but once you get the thing in a straight line, plant that right foot, the back just squirms down and you just go, but oh, it's just... So good, so good. As much as I'd love to get all sideways and capitalize on the immense chassis balance of this thing, A, I'm not Chris Harris, B, these are public roads and I wanna keep my license, but even without going all drift mode, this thing is so enjoyable to drive. This engine is a work of art. It, it's a turbocharged engine, but it feels naturally aspirated. It's got just beautiful throttle response, but it's still got all that lovely low down torque that a turbocharged en engine gives you, but then it still revs out like a naturally aspirated engine. This thing, well done. Now these twin clutch or dual clutch gearboxes are generally a bit guilty for being not great around town and being a bit clunky and kind of hard to use, but this one's this one's smooth and great. Like initial pickup's a little bit harsh, but it's fine. Great. So what's it sound like? Look, initially I wasn't the biggest fan of the oral experience of this car, but the more I drive it, the more I like it. That's like it, not love it. I haven't fallen in love with the sound, but I do, yeah, it does. Yeah, it sounds good. As far as rattles and creaks and squeaks go, there's none. It's as tight as a drum in here. It sounds new. So, I've actually thought of something that is sort of a criticism. It's not, it's kind of, sort of a criticism. I wonder if this is too fast for Australian roads. In Germany on an autobahn, this obviously makes sense, but like this thing is insanely fast. And my worry is to, to really get the best out of it, you do have to kind of, you know, drive the pants off it. But when you do that, you end up in, I'm going to jail territory. So I'm gonna throw it to you guys. Are these, is this generation of like sports sedan getting too fast? Is this too much power for Aussie roads? 
Hmm, let me know. Let us know in the comment section. Okay, to wrap up the driving element of this video, I'm blown away. Like, around town, it's fantastic. It does everything that you need to do daily without a, without a bother at all. But once you get up it, once you set everything to your specifications, it's just, how is this, how is this like an everyday car? It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I love driving it. Brilliant. Well done, BMW. Even after this many years. Don't want to give it back. Pricing kicks off at around about $65,000 for, say, a 2015 M3 or M4 with loads of kilometers on the clock. And it tops out at around about 160 grand for either 2018 M3 and M4 CSs or 2020 M4 competitions. BMW have a claimed fuel consumption figure of 8.3 litres per 100 kilometres, which means their engineers must have the most disciplined right feet in the business, because even before we did the enthusiastic driving stuff, we were seeing figures of around 10.5. BMW offer a three-year unlimited kilometre warranty on all M3s and M4s, and try to find one with some factory warranty left on it, because if things go wrong under here, oh my god, the cost is going to be terrifying. So, should you buy one? Well, look, these are incredible to drive. They're genuinely practical. They do the whole understated cool thing so incredibly well. And look, yeah, there are some concerns with some major mechanical gremlins that might pop up. But if you're financially and emotionally ready to tackle those gremlins, you can find one of these with minimal kilometers in the best condition possible that's been owned by someone mature and responsible. Yes, bloody oath, you should definitely buy one. We think the risk of things going wrong is worth it. The M3 arguably invented this practical, understated, classy category of performance car. And with what BMW have done with this car's successor, we think this generation still nails the criteria better than most. Plus, with how immensely ugly the new G80 M3 and M4 are, there's a chance that the depreciation on these might slow down from falling off a cliff to just stumbling down a hill. Guys, thank you so much for watching. What do you think of the M3? Let us know in the comments section below. And hey, while you're at it, can you please hit those like, subscribe, and bell icon buttons? And also, why not go and follow us on all the socials as well? See you next time. Because they're direct injected, you are gonna see some gummed up. <sighs> Wait. Wait. Wait, I can't, I can't start with this stupid grin. I'm gonna think of old nuns and dead cats or something. And the S55s just, oh, fucking hell. We're gonna have to stop. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna.